<laughs> so we're doing additional topic number two, which is trig substitution. This is another topic that is on uh, the Calc BC exam. Um, but if you guys do well on your Calc AB exam and go on in college to take Calc 2, this would be something that they would, would expect you to know. So we need to talk about it. All right, so if an integral contains a term of the form x or a squared minus x squared under a root, a squared plus x squared under a root, or x squared minus a squared under a root um, for some a value, you can evaluate the integral by making a substitution with a trig function. All right, so this is, you would use this when you can't use u substitution or partial fractions or um, integration by parts. You would try this trig substitution thing. Okay, so it says let x equal a sine theta. Try to eliminate the square root and the square root of a squared minus x squared. Okay, so we'd have the square root of a squared minus, we're saying x is a sine theta squared. So when we do that, we get the square root of a squared minus a squared sine squared theta. Which you then, then can pull out the a squared. They have it in common. So 1 minus sine squared. Right. That's cosine squared, right? So hopefully you guys remember that 1 equals sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta. Okay, so if you have 1 minus sine squared, that is cosine squared. So you have equals a squared times cosine squared theta. Yep, so a cosine theta. So you've now eliminated the problem of having a square root in your integral. Would there okay. be a different way to do that? Yes, there's lots of different ways. Okay. All right, so what substitution should be made for the other two radicals? Okay, so I should have put this chart on in your notes. I didn't. Okay, so the first thing we're going to have is what if we have a squared minus x squared under a root? So that was the first thing we did. We said we should make the substitution, so we're going to let x equal a sine theta. Somewhere in the problem, you guys used that 1 minus sine squared theta was cosine squared theta. And that helped eliminate the square root. Okay, so these are our three different. So it's like what you have, what you need to substitute, what you will use in the problem. Okay, the next thing would be if you have a squared plus x squared. In this case, you would use x equals a tangent theta. Okay, can you guys remember your other substitutions? So if I divided by, let's say, cosine everywhere in my Pythagorean identity, what do I get? Secant squared, right? equals tangent squared plus 1. Okay, so if you use a tangent squared, or a tangent theta, somewhere in your problem you're going to have 1 plus tangent squared theta. So you're going to have 1 plus tangent squared theta, and you will replace that with secant squared theta. Okay, and then that would eliminate your square root. All right, and then the last one is if you had x squared minus a squared. Okay, these are the only four different form, or three different forms we can have. We can't have x squared plus a squared because that's the same thing as the middle one, right? All right. So in this one, we would need x equals a secant theta. Okay, and in this problem, you would end up with secant squared theta minus 1 equals tangent squared theta. So this will make more sense once we do these. Okay, so this chart's very important. So you have this chart available for your homework. No big deal. Okay, so number one. So I have one over x squared times the square root of four minus x squared. Okay, you guys have a square root of a squared minus x squared. Do you guys see it? Yeah. So a is two. Yep, so a is two. All right, so that means that we're going to let, so we're going to let x equal, which form was it in? Yeah, see? a squared minus x squared is a, x equals a sine theta. So we're going to do 2 sine theta. 
Okay, now let's think about if I'm replacing. So if I'm replacing some things, x squared, right, is 2 squared times sine squared. So I'm going to have 2 sine theta squared. Right, that was my x. On the inside of my square root, I'm going to have 4 minus x squared. So 2 uh, times sine theta squared. I still have 1 on top. But now I have a dx. I can't put dx because I have thetas now. This is just like a u substitution. Okay, do you guys remember with u substitutions, like when we said let u equal 4x squared minus 5? du was 8x dx, right? We needed that dx. So what do I need? I need to solve for dx. I need to have d theta, right? So I'm going to take the derivative of x, which is going to be 2 cosine theta d theta. Okay, that gives me my d theta. So I'm going to have times 2 cosine theta d theta. And this, this is all going to simplify. Okay, so right now I have 2 cosine theta d theta over 4 sine squared theta. I'm going to have 4 minus 4 sine squared theta. Sometimes I'll kind of shortcut it over here. So if I need to pull out what they have in common, I'm going to pull out a 4. I would have 1 minus sine squared theta left. Do you guys see where this is going? Yeah, you'd have cosine squared. It's all under a square root. So you'd have 4 cosine squared under a square root. So what would you get? 2 cosine, Two cosine theta. All right, so you can kind of simplify it there instead of writing the whole integral over and over. All right, so we get 2 cosine theta d theta over 4 sine squared theta times 2 cosine theta. Yeah. There's lots of things that cancel, right? So you get 1 fourth pulled out to the front. You have 1 over sine squared, which we call cosecant squared theta d theta. Okay. We know how to take the derivative of something and get secant squared out. So what do we take the derivative of to get secant squared out? No? Okay, to take to get secant squared though, secant squared is the one you guys probably know right off the top of your head. Tangent. You take the derivative of tangent, you get secant squared. Alright, so what do I take the derivative of in order to get cosecant squared? Cotangent, but it's negative, right? Negative cotangent. Alright, because you would get negative cosecant squared when you take the derivative of cotangent. So we get negative one fourth cotangent theta plus c. All right, it seems like you're all the way done because you've now integrated, but you're not all the way done. So these, these problems are kind of long. You don't need to solve for C because it's not like an initial condition problem. Our initial problem was in X, so we need to get it back in X. Okay, so it kind of goes back to pre-calc where you drew the little triangles. It's not bad, though. The triangle I always set up like this. So I put the right triangle on the left, the theta on the right. And I use what I had up here. See, I said x equals 2 sine of theta. That means x over 2 equals sine of theta. Well, hopefully you guys remember from geometry, SOHCAHTOA, right? If you have SOHCAHTOA, sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So x is opposite, 2 is hypotenuse. So we have opposite the theta is x, the hypotenuse is 2. Okay, we want cotangent. Cotangent is the reciprocal of tangent. So think of tangent with your Sokotoa. Opposite over adjacent. So we want adjacent over opposite, right? So we're going to have negative 1 fourth. We need adjacent over opposite plus C. Okay, but we don't know adjacent. How can you find it? Yeah, you can find it with the Pythagorean theorem. So when I first learned these, I always let this be Y. And I solved for y. I said, oh, my Pythagorean theorem tells me that x squared plus y squared equals 2 squared. So that means if I'm solving for y, I'm going to have 4 minus x squared equals y squared. So y is plus or minus the square root of 4 minus x squared. Okay, it's always the positive. So we're going to use the positive. So adjacent over opposite. So adjacent is uh, square root of... 4 minus x squared. Yep. 
you guys see how I got it up there? Um, it, you, there's usually something that involves that, yes. It's not always your final answer, no. So adjacent over uh, opposite, so opposite is x. So I just clean it up a little bit. I do the square, negative square root of 4 minus x squared all over 4x plus c. So I just multiplied my two fractions there. So multiply the tops, multiply the bottoms. That's it. But when you look at number one, I mean, you can't solve that with integration by parts or, you know, um, use substitution or anything nice, right? You have to use this substitution. Yep. Let's try the next one. Now this one, if you're smart, you don't do a trig substitution. How would you do this? Oh, use substitution. You let u be 9 plus x squared, right? <laughs> so 9 plus x squared, when you take the derivative, you have 2x, right? So that's going to use the top. Okay, but we're going to go ahead and do it with trig substitution just so you're getting used to these. Okay, so we're going to do trig substitution. So it's in the form a squared plus x squared. So what am I going to do? x equals 3 tangent theta, right? This is 3 squared plus x squared. A is 3. All right, I know I'm going to need my dx. So dx is going to be 3, derivative of tangent. Secant so squared. I heard that very quietly, as if some of you guys were not confident about your derivative-taking abilities. <laughs> Sounds like we need some derivative drills. All right, so x is 3 tangent theta. I have 9 plus... 3 tangent theta squared, so all of it squared. And then dx is 3 secant squared theta d theta. Okay, they usually simplify a lot. So I have 9 tangent theta secant squared theta d theta all over. I'd pull out the 9 they have in common, 9 times 1 plus tangent squared theta. Do you see how I did that? Because 3 squared was 9. All right, 1 plus tangent squared is secant squared. So you have 9 secant squared under a square root. So what does it end up being? 3 secant. So this reduces to 3. We're going to pull the 3 out. One of the secants is going to reduce with um, 1 on top, right? So I'm going to have tangent of theta, secant theta, no, nothing on the bottom, d theta. Yeah. <laughs> nothing on the bottom. Yeah. All right, what do we take the derivative of in order to get tangent theta, secant theta? Secant, 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 secant squared. Secant, not secant squared, just secant, right? Derivative of secant is secant tangent. All right, so this is going to equal 3 secant theta plus c. This is the point where we draw our triangle because we want to know how to get rid of theta, right? I don't want theta, I want x's. Go back to your original. We said x was equal to 3 tangent theta. That means x over 3 equals tangent of theta. Tangent, we know, is opposite over adjacent. That's the TOA part. So x is opposite the theta. 3 is adjacent, so it's next to. Remember, adjacent is never hypotenuse. So I need to solve for this part here. No. <laughs> 3 squared plus x squared equals y squared. Take the square root of both sides. So 9 plus x squared. Look back at your original, see how it was in there. Kind of gives you a clue. Okay. Hmm? Is it always going to be that original one? Yeah, usually because um, if you have like some kind of root, when you integrate it, that root is still there. You know, kind of like the opposite of u substitution. Or not use of like chain rule. Okay, so I have 3 secant theta. Secant theta is the reciprocal of cosine. So cosine was 
opposite or adjacent over hypotenuse, right? So we're going to have hypotenuse over adjacent. So you're going to have 3 times hypotenuse over adjacent plus c. So you get the square root of 9 plus x squared plus c. Okay, humor me. Try it with u substitution. So I'll give you a couple seconds to try it on your own. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so super fast we'll do this. So you let uh, u equal uh, the 9 plus x squared. So du would be 2x dx. In our original problem, we have x dx that we want to replace. So I'm going to have 1 half du equals x dx. So when I integrate, I'm going to have my 1 half du replacing the x dx. So I have 1 over the square root of u. 1 over square root of u is the same as u to the 1 half. Or negative 1 half, yeah. Can you clean it? All right, so we add 1 to the power. Do 1 over 1 half, so that's 2, the reciprocal. We still have that 1 half out front, plus c. So it's u to the 1 half plus c, and u was 9 plus x squared. 1 half power means square root, 9 plus x squared plus c. Same thing, much faster. <laughs> so if you need to use u substitution, that would be the preferred method, but uh, we're learning this for a reason. You can always use the u substitution. All right, so let's try the next one. Nope, you cannot use u substitution for this one. Why can you, can you not? Yeah, the du part's like on the bottom, right? The x dx part, so that you can take care of the du part. Okay, so we're going to let um, x equal 5, which one? Secant, Secant right, because it's an f, in the form x squared minus a squared. So that means dx is 5, derivative of secant is secant x tangent x, so secant theta tangent theta d theta. So when I set it up, I have the square root of x, oh sorry, start out with x, so square root of uh, 5 secant theta squared minus 25 over 5 secant theta dx is 5 secant theta tangent theta d theta. It's long, but at least you notice 5 secant theta and 5 secant theta cancel. So it kind of makes it a little nicer. Okay, on the top I'm going to have 25 factored out, and then I'm going to have 1 minus, or sorry, I keep doing 1, secant squared theta minus 1, which is tangent squared. So when you take uh, the square root, you're going to have 5 tangent theta times tangent theta, which looks promising, but how, what do you take the derivative of to get tangent squared? Uh-oh. Yeah. So this is why yesterday, remember, I was like, oh, I forgot to make the homework for you guys. And I decided not to just give you guys random problems because sometimes they work out really nasty where you have to take, you know, you have to integrate something that you don't know how to integrate. Now, this one isn't bad. So think of the only trig function that we know how to integrate that's squared. Secant squared, right? Does that make sense? Do you see what I'm asking? So we don't know how to integrate cosine squared. We don't know how to do uh, sine squared. So you can try to switch it to sine squared over cosine squared. It's not really going to help you though. You can't do a u substitution. You could try like integration by parts. It's messy, messy, messy. Okay, it's not working. All right, so what I'm telling you is think about secant squared, which is related to tangent squared. How? We just used it, didn't we? We said secant squared minus one was all of that was tangent squared. So that means that tangent squared is secant squared minus one. So I'm going to switch it to that. So I'm going to have 5 secant squared theta minus 1. So when you're first trying this, I mean, your, your first thoughts go to, can I do a u substitution? No. And then you try integration by parts. It's not working. I mean, I started this one out, and I was like trying some different things. And I was like, oh, duh, secant squared. I want secant squared. All right, and it, it came out very nicely. Because now, when I integrate, 
I have 5. When I integrate secant squared, I get tangent, right? Derivative of tangent is secant squared. Minus, what do I write next? Theta. And then plus c at the end. So I need to draw my triangle. So I have x over 5 equals secant theta. Now you can think of secant theta, you can think of it's the reciprocal of cosine, right? So it's going to be hypotenuse over adjacent. So hypotenuse over adjacent. Or if you are more comfortable seeing it with cosine, take the reciprocal of both sides. That's legit. You can do that. So 5 over x has to be cosine theta. Same thing, right? Adjacent over hypotenuse. 5 over 5 and x, same places. This other one ends up being x squared, the hypotenuse squared, minus the leg squared, 25, under a square root. Kind of looking like what we have up here. So I'm going to have 5. Tangent of theta is going to be opposite over adjacent. So I'm going to have x squared minus 25 over 5 minus 5 theta. I can't just leave theta in my problem. Yeah. You need to solve for theta. You can solve for theta in two different ways. It doesn't matter. You could use this equation or this equation. If I'm getting rid of secant or I'm getting rid of cosine, I'm taking the arc secant or arc cosine, right? Inverse cosine. Mm -hmm. Okay, so most of you are more comfortable with cosine, which is fine. So you could write it as inverse cosine of 5 over x equals theta. Plus c. Last thing is just the 5's cancel. So it, you just get the square root of x squared minus 25 minus 5 cosine, inverse cosine of 5 over x, plus c. That's it.